Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was recently forced to fire the Triangle player from its band. It was just one ting after another. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Between Two Cities from Stone Mayor Games. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. Between Two Cities from Stone Mayor Games regularly plays at three to seven players. However, I am just going to review the Solitaire game today, as that is the only version that I have played. Now, this is a tile laying game, and basically in the multiplayer game, essentially what you do is you're going to create two cities, one on either side of you, which means you're actually sharing the city with the person to your right and to your left. You're going to try to build the most effective uh, point scoring city, and then at the end of the game, you're actually going to receive points based on whichever city is next to you, the lowest score. So you're going to essentially win by the lowest scored city that is either to your right or to your left. Now in the solitaire game, things of course are slightly different. Things uh, don't work exactly like that because there are no people to your right and your left. Instead, you use the automata system. Ah, uh, Stone Mayor Games and the automata system. Essentially, you're going to have two different uh, bot players that are going to be to your right and to your left, and you are going to then build a uh, tiles with each of those two uh, automata players, bot players, and then the bots will be building a third city right in between them. Now, for the Solitaire player, you can either play in a simple mode, which is a really quick way to get tiles out there and score quickly, or there is the full mode where there's a little more involved to it, a little bit more to it, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at here. First of all, you're going to get a deck of automata cards. You're going to go ahead and shuffle them. They're going to tell you how the automata are going to be playing the game. And next, you're going to grab two of the duplex tiles. Most of the tiles are simple squares, and they contain different kinds of buildings, such as factories, parks, houses, taverns, etc., etc. Uh, but you also have some duplex tiles, and these contain two of those uh, buildings on them. You're going to start the game by taking two of the duplex tiles and placing them in the automata space, and you're essentially going to try to make them uh, align so you're giving one row to each of those different kinds of buildings. Now for the cities to your right and to your left, kind of like in the multiplayer game, those cities will be a 4x4 grid and the automata city does not have to conform to the 4x4 grid at all. It's just kind of building its own thing, but you are still bound by those rules. Now there are three basic rounds that occur here. Now first of all, you are going to go ahead and draw three of the square tiles for you and three of the square tiles for each of the bot players. Next you're going to draw an automata card for one of the bots and essentially you are going to look at the player shared uh, column. Now the player shared column is going to give you different information. It may tell you just place whatever is going to score the most. It may say place houses. It may say um, place more uh, buildings so that houses can be scored better. It's going to have all different kinds of things, maybe factories, that it's going to tell you to put in that player shared city. Next, it's going to tell you what you're going to put in the uh, uh, bot city, the automata city. So you're going to go ahead and look down on the automata column to tell you what you're going to put in that city. And again, you're not going to be arranging it exactly the same as one of your, your cities. Now, after you've done that for both of the automata cities, you're going to take two of your tiles, you're going to assign one to each city, and then you're going to insert that tile into the city in a way you think will score it best. After you've completed that, you're going to go ahead and move, uh, you're going to rotate all the tiles in your hand to the left. They will all rotate around to the left around the table. Next for round two, what you do is you grab three duplex tiles. You're going to assign and then insert one of those uh, duplex tiles into each of the cities, and then you're going to discard the third one. The automata does not get a duplex tile, it got it at the beginning of the game. You're going to do this thing again, you're going to grab three more duplex tiles, do the same thing, and then you're going to move on to round three. For round three, you do the exact same thing as you did in round one. You grab seven tiles for each player, you and both of the bots. You will continue to uh, use the bot cards to place them for the bots in both the automata city and your shared city. Then you will place uh, two uh, in either of the cities that you share with, and this time you will rotate to the right. You'll continue to do that until all the cards are placed, and the two cities on your left and right have a 4x4 four four grid. Now the different buildings are scored in different ways. For instance, the shops are scored only if they are orthogonal, either straight across or straight up and down. Uh, up to four, you're going to gain different point values the more you have in those configurations. 
Now for factories, whoever has the most factories is going to score the most points. I think they score four for each factory. Whoever has the second most factories will only score three for each of their factories. And whoever has uh, the uh, third place of factories, they will only score, I believe, two for each of their factories. Now your taverns come in four different varieties. You have different symbols at the top, you know, beds, food, uh, beer, etc., etc. Now you'll score tavern tiles based on how many different uh, taverns of those symbols that you have. You can only score each tavern once. Now office buildings, essentially you're scored for how many you have. Adjacency doesn't matter. They, they don't have to be next to each other. They can be all over, anywhere. However many you have are going to score you a number of points. However, they also do gain an additional point if an office is next to a tavern. Now with parks, you're trying to score uh, contiguous tile parks. You want the parks to be adjacent to each other, and the more you have, and then the more that are adjacent in each is going to score you uh, more points. Next you have houses. Now a house is going to score a point for each other uh, kind of building that you have in the city. So you can score each building and then it's kind of essentially multiplied by the number of other buildings you have in the, in the city excluding other uh, houses. Now also too, if a house is adjacent to a factory, it's a negative one point. Nobody wants to live next to a factory. So you go ahead, you score all the cities, you score the Automata city, you score the city on your left, the city on your right, and you see how much they're all worth. Now essentially, in order for you to win, both of your cities on your right and your left have to be uh, greater than the Automata city, because again, you're scored off the lowest city that is next to you. So if the lowest score of one of your cities is higher than the Automata city, then you win! Between two rivers, solitaire. So I'm a little late to this game. This game came out like six or seven years ago, and the good people at Stone Mayor Games, you know, they said, hey, we got this copy, you want to review it? I said, sure, you know. Um, so just bear that in mind, it's out there, and there's a lot of other reviews that touch on the full game experience. I'm just going to concentrate, of course, on the solo game experience. So this is a, a pretty basic tile-laying game, and I'll tell you right now, it's really designed for multiplayer. Obviously, the whole concept of this game is really fundamentally a multiplayer game. And I think this really would shine if you had a bigger play group. And one of the chief virtues of this game is it's not long, right? It's a pretty pretty quick game. And I imagine if you do have people with AP, that may compromise it, but generally it's a pretty quick game. Um, but I think fundamentally it is built for the higher player count. And I don't want to say the, the solo version feels tacked on. Obviously, I do think there was some thought that went into this. And I will say, too, it's fun. I had fun playing the Solitaire version. Uh, I had fun, I think, because it is so quick, because it is so short. If this had been a much longer game, say if this had been an hour game to play Solitaire, I would probably not enjoy it. I, I wouldn't think there's the meat there. But honestly, a game, I've, I've played this a few times, I think... The longest game I had was maybe 25 minutes, so it's not a long game. With that in mind, it's fun and it's enjoyable, but I really did get a sense I'd like this game a lot more with more players. So I, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to give it a, a, a recommend, I'm going to say buy it, based on the idea of um, I think it would play better, but of course I can't quantify that, but I did have fun with it solo. Uh, I think if you're looking for a solo game, a solo tile laying game, solo tile laying game I don't know that I've... I don't know that I played another solo tile laying game before, um, but I did enjoy it. It, it was fun, uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. Buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about uh, military history and books on history and other fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and also please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I recently found out that my father was a mime. But he never talked about it. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Uh, I have recently come up with a theme song for Scythe. And I'm very excited um, because uh, I really think uh, Stone Mayor Games is going to want to license this, maybe put out a little CD with future releases of the game, because it is that good. So, <clears throat> if you'll indulge me now, here is my theme song to Scythe. 
side, 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 side. It just it just kind of goes on like that. Side, 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 side.